Hello everyone, if you're new around here, this is a third video about my under 1MB sandbox game. In the last video, we implemented 21 suggestions, and said suggestions also followed some bugs. One of the predominant feature we implemented was biomes into the game. Whenever you, the player, move out from one of the edge tiles of the world, you enter a new biome. But there is one big problem at play. Let's take a look at this clip. Did you catch it? The player gets immediately transported to the new biome, right as he enters the edge tile. The new biome should have loaded once the player moved out from the edge tile, not as he entered it. The solution I've come up with is to stop the biome generation function from running until you're on the edge tile and you release the movement keys. We only run the function once you repress the movement key. Right, that's one done. Funny enough, the next exploit has to do with biomes as well. For some reason, whenever the player is in one of these three biomes and they move, they cease to exist. That is visually, they still are there, just invisible. The problem here was caused entirely because of a single line. This line precisely. Each player in radius is a function which deals with detecting if the player is in a close proximity with a bull. The issue is that neither desert, icy wasteland or caves have bulls in them. So the function would run and not be able to find any bulls in the world, which would then give an error and jeopardize the entire player script. We fix this by just wrapping this function in an if statement, one which detects if the current biome the player is in has bulls or not. The final exploit for now, yes, I do realize there's one more at the top, but the bulls are just so freaking broken that I'm temporarily going to make them extinct. Alright, back to the bug at hand. You might have noticed that once we enter a new biome, items lose color. This is occurring because we are not saving item colors and reapplying them once we reload the game. One way we can go about implementing this is by in the inventory script defining every item in the game and by matching them with their respective colors. Alright, now we can get to the main event, crafting. Crafting is something that is universal for every sandbox slash survival game. Here's my take on it. We predefine every crafting recipe, and once you replicate one of these recipes by placing appropriate materials and items on the ground, and you press the enter key, your desired item gets made. First our recipe I conceived was for a pickaxe. It requires 3 wood and 5 rocks. Now let's actually implement the crafting system. The first thing we need to do is check if an appropriate recipe has been laid out on the ground. We can do this by first writing a for loop, which will run through every single tile until it finds the first item in the recipe. For example, the starting item in the pickaxe formation is this rock. After we find this rock, we continue searching until we find the rock above and to the right of it, and one after that, until we reach the very last item in the recipe, which is this bottom wood piece. If the code is able to locate every single item in this pickaxe recipe, we can press enter, which will turn everything back into grass, apart from the most middle part of the recipe, which will become the pickaxe item. Next we go to our pickup function in our player script, and add the pickaxe inside of it. There we go, a working crafting system. If any potential modders or anyone is curious about how I go about implementing new craftable, pickable and placeable items, stay tuned because I give a solid breakdown on it soon in the video. Next, let's actually add a sprite of a pickaxe, and also make pickaxes not stackable. This is quite simple actually. All we have to do is go to our pickup function and tell it to only ever add pickaxes to empty slots. I would like to suggest another recipe, and I'd like for you to guess what it is, before I reveal it. You got it? Say it with me, an X. The great thing about implementing an X is that it helps us get rid of the old red A. First let's make a sprite for it as well. First we detect the recipe, then we replace each of the items with grass, apart from the most middle part. And lastly we give the player ability to pick it up as well. After that we need to replace all the code referencing the old red A with our new boy. And also we need to give it a durability. Essentially we just use the item counter for that. And that's all. Now we have some resemblance of a game loop. You start with 3 pieces of wood and 4 rocks. You can use it to make an axe, which you use to chop down trees. Then you collect more rocks and make another axe. And you continue this endless loop until the sun has exploded and the time has come to an end. While I was playtesting my Sisyphus centric game loop, I realized that entering new biomes defaults your active slot to the first one, which really wasn't a big deal to resolve, since we already have variables that keep track of which slot is currently active. All we have to do is just save that variable in another variable, and then apply it back to the first variable at the start of the game. Now let's give the pickaxe some functionality. Let's add the ability of mining. We can do this quite easily by repurposing the tree chopping logic. Alright, now that our player has acquired some raw iron, let's give him a way to smelt it into iron bars by implementing yet another crafting recipe for a furnace. I had a bit of a fun with the 
this recipe, starting by placing two columns of rocks with a single tile gap. Next, place another rock above them in the middle. Below said rock, place a seed, and below the seed, coal. Now, don't ask me how I got a whole tree inside the furnace. Answer might just break your understanding of reality. Trust me. The thing is, coals don't really exist in the extended universe of the under megabyte game. So let's add them to our cave. And also let's heavily populate it with rocks as well. Now I was thinking, right? How do I implement the smelting mechanic? At first I was thinking maybe you need to place furnaces, then put coal below it and below them the ore, and then just wait. But ultimately I settled on a different idea. Some of you might call me a cop-out for taking an easy route, but I decided to incorporate smelting through crafting. You basically need to place down coal and then next to it your desired ore, and encase both of them with furnaces. Then just press enter and you get one smelted ore. Alright, let's actually make all this. And at last, this is a bite-sized tutorial I promised earlier in the video. For anyone who is curious on how I add items, these are craftable, pickupable, and placeable. Whenever you're adding a new item into this game, you have to decide if your item will be visualized by just a letter or an actual sprite. For this example, let's go with a sprite. First things first, open up the font you're using in your chosen sprite editor. I personally use a sprite and draw the sprite for your new item. Next save the file and head to this website. In this text box write all the characters that make up your sprite sheet. Next resize the tile height to the height of your characters and make sure to tick off monospace down below. And finally press save DTF. Now locate your exported font and drag it into the game folder. Next open the game folder in your chosen IDE, I use Visual Studio Code and head to style.css file. And at the very top in SRC's URL, type the name of your font. Visually we are all done, let's get to programming. First head to crafting.js script. Next below the other items write the name of your item. After you do so, declare a function with the same name as what you just wrote. Inside the function write out a for loop with the length of the world. Inside the for loop we need to reference each of the individual components that make up your recipe. Firstly, start by defining the very first item in your recipe. I'll choose this rock, write an if statement and inside the world.children, then square brackets and inside the index of the items that make up your recipe. For the first, we just write i, then dot, inner text, equals, equals, and write what the tile you're referencing is inside some quotation marks. For our case, the first tile is a furnace, so we just write f. Then we type two end symbols and we repeat exactly the same process. But we change the index inside the world.childrens. Once you describe every single item, write tiles and inside the same indexes as the ones in your if statements. Then equal sign and exact same lines as the ones you wrote in your if statement. Then once more an equal sign and inside quotation marks G. Make sure to repeat all of this for all the items that your recipe consists of. Meanwhile, I'd like to explain all of these lines to you. Firstly, tiles is a variable which consists of every single tile that makes up the world. These lines we are writing is used to replace each of the items back to grass. If we decide to not do the same for the tiles variable, the items would get replaced visually, but they would still be there logically. Once you're done with all the lines, pick one out, you'll replace the G of your chosen line with a character that represents the item you're crafting. For representation purposes, let's try to smell the iron right now. Alright, everything is working, we just have to revert everything back to correct colors now. To do this, select all the lines you've just written and paste them below. In each of the lines, replace inner text with tile.color and replace all the G's with green. On the lines that doesn't contain G, write the color you want your item to be represented by. And that's all for crafting. Now let's make it placeable and give the player the ability to be able to pick it back up. Head to the player script and find the pickup function. To make things easier, go to the list item that is written inside the pickup function and copy the code. Then paste it and replace all the lines referencing the previous item with your new item. And there you go. Now you can pick up your new item. Now the placing down part. Head back to the same script and this time find the place down function. First you need to go to the topmost if statement and type this line. But at the end add your item. Now scroll down until you find the last item inside the if statement and once more copy and paste its code. And replace the previous item with your item. You have to do this three more times for all the four directions and we are now done with the micro tutorial. But as a last thing I'd like to show you a trick you can use to give yourself any amount of any item for testing purposes. You need to write local storage.inventory then equals and in quotation marks all the items you want. 
think of this quotation mark as your in-game inventory so if you write w and then r you have wood in your first slot and rock in your second slot if you want to modify the quantities of items you can use local storage.inf underline and one through eight since I posted the last video, I've gotten a ton of suggestions from you guys, which I'm internally grateful for. So I would feel terrible if I didn't implement at least one suggestion from you guys into the game. The one I chose is from Subzero XX, which, I mean, cool username, man. I love MK, but uh, Scorpion is cooler. Well, actually, uh, Subzero is cooler. Okay, yeah, that, that wasn't really funny. His suggestion was to only display the item count of an active inventory slot which is a great idea and plus it was quite simple to add it only took this one line now you can only see the item amount or durability of the item you're holding also here's my two flares that I've added to it if you press 9 or 0 so if you exceed how many slots there are item count for every slot come back if you guys would like to give any suggestions or just chat around with a wonderful community of under megabyte sandbox game we talk about great stuff like adventure time and yeah we only talk about adventure time uh, feel free to join the dedicated discord server the link is in the description thanks to anyone who decides to join all right that brings us to the finale drum rolls please the storage went from 40.7 to a whopping 81.3 kilobytes I typically try to do something cool at the end of these videos, so I thought it'd be cool if I drew the Dwarf Fortress icon guy in the game. Since, if you guys didn't know, this image from the original Dwarf Fortress was entirely the inspiration for the whole game. Dwarf Fortress is an amazing game, I don't think my game will ever be as amazing, but still, I'd like to try my best to make it as good as possible. Thanks to everyone for watching.